Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Charlie Craven back again with um, a cool little fly that a uh, good friend of mine, Matt Prouse, and his boys um, have really taken to fishing around these parts lately. Um, this is a harrop ant, um, and uh, the, you know the most current version has got a CDC wing. This is this is sort of the um, the old version that's got a duck quill wing and. Uh, um, it's a pretty cool little fly and sort of fun to tie, and I've been tying a bunch of them for, for Matt and the boys, so um, I figured I'd show you how to do it. Um, this is a good, you know, obviously summertime terrestrial, um, and, it, you know, in tying it, it seems like a simple fly, but there's a few little tricks for sure. Um, so I'll show you, show you what I've figured out here in the past few days. So I'm going to start off, we're going to tie this on a 16, which is not too big. You know, a lot of uh, uh, ants you see in the mountains are, uh, are pretty good size. Um, and the uh, uh, 16 is, is none too big, even as big as a 14, even a 12, some of those big carpenter ants. But, um, you know, I think in a lot of cases the, uh, the fish uh, eat this for a termite as well. Um, over in Idaho there are uh, uh, termite falls on the Henry's Fork, and I, I suspect that's where the idea for this slide came from, but can't prove that. Um, it's just speculation on my part. Um, but I'm going to start off with some black Vivas 14 on. And uh, I'm going to actually put on my... My good glasses. Oh, so much better. Some black Vivas 14 knot, and you can see I started that thread just about middle of the hook, maybe even a little bit bit in front of that. And I'm just going to build a little thread base there. And for the abdomen, I'm going to use some super fine dubbing. And this is sort of a honey color, um, which is not a commercial color. What I've done is I've taken some some rusty brown, some mahogany brown, and some amber super fine dubbing, and mix them together. So I'll show you real quick how you'd go about doing that is you take a little pinch of each or however many flies you were going to tie worth and this fly does take more dubbing than you think so you can see I've got a little pinch of each color and I'm just gonna sort of align that and pull it apart and restack it. This is much like you just kinda stack your dubbing normally to get it aligned uh, but with those three colors as I do that Kind of fold them back together, and I realize I'm not staying in focus because I'm watching what I'm doing. But just kind of pull that apart and put it back together, restack until I feel like the colors are well mixed, and then I've got my my honey colored dubbing. So um, that works for all sorts of different colors. Just a little pro tip for you there: you can make your own colors. Um, so I'm going to take my honey dubbing. And I'm going to take a pretty good sized chunk of this. You know, this is for a size 16 fly. Um, this is a fair bit of dubbing, and I probably will need to add a little bit at the end. Um, but what I'll do here is I'm going to draw out my thread. I'm going to put this on, you know, about as tight as I can. It's always as tight as I can, but I'm going to keep it pretty darn thin as well. In the interest of this camera being in the way, I'm going to not make too long a strand. But I'm going to start this dubbing up here at the beginning of the thread base. And I'll work back just barely around the bend. Just you can see I'm just barely onto the curve of the bend there. And then I'll come forward. And now I can kind of tighten up the rest of this dubbing. And I like the dubbing to sort of peter out into a pretty thin strand here. That just gives me a lot more, a lot more options um, when, I'm, when I'm about to end the body. Um, you can see I caught the dubbing on the hook point there. That's an imperative part of this process. I've done it on almost every one. Um, so, if you are also a slow learner, um, you'll probably enjoy that little little tip. But I'm going to build up, you know, a fairly fairly fat back end. Tighten my dubbing down just a bit here, and you can see as I'm running out of dubbing, I want to just jump off that front edge. So I've got a nice prominent um, gaster back end of the ant there. Um, now for the, the legs on this one, um, Renee used um, moose body hair, and uh, um, that's what I'm going to use here just to stay true to the original pattern. Um, but I've also tied a bunch of these with uh, uh, sexy floss legs. Let me get one up here and show you. A um, little strand of sexy floss, and I did split that sexy floss, that small sexy floss um, that I split in half, but it's going to be tied in the same way. Um, but I'm going to show you the original pattern. and. Um, the easiest thing, we're just going to use two strands of moose body hair. Um, and what I'll do here, this is um, bleached moose body hair. Uh, you can see, so it's sort of cinnamon colored. It'll match the fly. Um, but I've just stacked that bunch and tied it together with some thread here at the bottom. So I've got a little batch to work from. 
um, and that keeps the ends even and makes it a little easier than trying to fight to get two strands off the hide. So I'm going to clip two strands out of there and try to try to keep keep their tips even. And I'm going to take those two strands and get them up here, measure them about a hook shank long. You can see my threads just hanging right in front of the body there. And I'll catch these and tie them in on top of the hook. And then I'll split one to each side. And these are just sort of outriggers. This just sort of helps to balance the fly on the water. And I'll wrap over those right up to the front of that body. So we've just got two widespread legs there. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing tricky. And I'll come forward and I'll clip those butt ends out. Now the wing on this fly is uh, duck quill, um, and I've got several sets of matched duck quills here. Um, and what I want to do is cut just a narrow slip, um, and it's narrower than you think. It, uh, it really doesn't take much for this. I'll cut a slip out, like so. And what I want to do, the first thing I'll do, I'll try to do this up here where you can see it, is I'm going to straighten the feather out a bit, and then I'm going to cut the end square, and then I'll knock the edges off, not necessarily making this to a point. This is hard to do where you can see it. Yeah, about like so. So it's just sort of a rounded end. Um, now the side there, that's the outside of the feather, and this is the the shinier inside. I like to tie these in with the inside up um, so there's a little bit of curve to it and it'll curve down. Um, and also this wing is fairly long. You know, if I measure this a whole shank length long um, and then move it back to my tie-in point, that's about how long it's going to be. Um, if you look at a, at a flying ant, a real flying ant, um, that wing is very narrow um, and very long. So I'm going to lay that in. I'm going to come around it with my thread and catch it. And I can wrap over it right up to the base of the body. So we've got that long wing. Just make sure he stays straight and that he's up on top. And then I'll trim those butt ends out. And you can see I'm kind of taking pains to keep this this waist in between um, as smooth as I can because that's where we're going to wrap our hackle. Um, now we get to sort of, uh, you know, for, for me anyway, the controversial part. Um, the, an ant um, is one of the few flies where I'll, I'll ever do this. Um, uh, there's a, a couple others. Renegades, um, flies where you're wrapping hackle on um, on a fairly uh, bare, smooth smooth base, um, but particularly on an ant because I want it to be sparse. Um, and what I'm talking about is what I did here is I've stripped one side of a hackle feather. Um, and, and the interest of this is just to keep this fly sparse and thin. Um, I see a lot of guys on the internet do this. These hackles, when you strip them on one side, do wrap beautifully. They've, you know, there's just one edge, so it lays perfectly straight up on edge. Um, and it's sort of a uh, an ego thing these days to to make a fly, um, you know, look super clean. But it really does reduce the amount of hackle. Um, in this case, we have a, a valid reason for reducing the amount of hackle. We're, we want this fly to stay sparse. Um, so what I've done, in my case, tying left-handed. Um, if I hold this up here. Um, you guys are looking at the outside of the feather. Um, I have stripped, you know, on my outside, it's the left side of the feather because I'm going to wrap that on the inside of the turn. Um, so I've stripped that, that whole feather, except for that one strand right there that was showing. Screw that strand. All the rest of the strands I stripped. Um, and what I'll do down here at the base is I'm just going to strip a few fibers off the base, just like you would any other time, so I've got a bare stem. And I'm going to take this feather, and I'm going to tie it in. Um, just I like to leave a little space, let me grab my scissors here, um, a little space here between the base of the wing and where I start the hackle. So just really about a thread width, it's not much, um, but it just sort of accentuates that, that little, uh, little waist that we're building in here. I'm going to tie that stem down, and again, make sure that that's smooth. And then I'm going to start to wrap my hackle. Now, you'll see here as I start to wrap this, this feather's going to stand right straight up on edge. And I'm going to go about three, maybe four turns. I'm going to call three good. Um, now, when I get there, you can see how clean and straight that hackle is. I'm going to back that thread up so it's right up to the front edge. And then I'll tie that feather off just straight up and down with a couple of turns. And then I can come in and trim that out. I'm going to come forward over that stub. Um, I see that we're not quite square to the 
to the camera here. Let me get you a little better angle. Oh, yep, that's what we're after. Um, you can see how narrow that hackle collar is. Um, very clean, very narrow, very sparse, um, which on a little tiny bug like this is what we want. Um, so now on the front end of this bug, for the head, I'm just going to use some straight mahogany. Um, and this is super fine again. Um, and I'm going to take, again, it's a little more than you think you need. And I'm going to twist this on um, sort of in a short strand um, that's sort of fat and very tight. Um, and again, petering out on either end. And I'm going to use this to build the head. And what I want to do here is I want to leave about uh, half an eye length or so up front here. It's very easy to kind of crowd this right up onto the hook eye. And I'm going to work backwards to just short of the hackle. And then I'll work that dubbing back and forth, kind of building my little ball. And I'm gauging how many turns I've got left before I end up with essentially bare thread there behind the hook eye. Um, I like to leave one single strand of dubbing that you see it there, um, just sticking out the front of the hook eye. That just makes things more interesting. Um, or, you know, you could elect to cut that off if you're in that kind of mood, and I'm in that kind of mood. So I'm going to trim that out, and now I'm going to come in and whip finish. Um, you can, so you can see this, this fly has a, an actual thread head, not tied right up to the hook eye. And then the one last thing I'll do is I'll take some Flex Seal, um, or vinyl cement, any kind of flexible cement. And honestly, I don't know that it makes any difference if it's hard cement or not. Um, but just to keep this wing from shredding when we fish it, I'm going to take and just put a, a drop on the wing and just sort of smear it up top and bottom. Doesn't take much. Um, and that'll also help keep that curve straight. Um, or get rid of the curve so it stays straight, I guess is the better way to put that. And there's our hair up flying ant. Um, really a cool little bug. I've had a lot of fun tying these. I've tied up several dozen of them. Um, I tied, tied a couple dozen for Matt and the boys, and uh, I've got a couple dozen sitting here on my desk and kind of played with different, uh, different color schemes. But um, fun little fly. That's a cool one. Twist some up. Um, you know, I used that, uh, I've got like a barred ginger saddle feather um, that I've uh, used on this one. Um, but you could use, you know, straight brown. You could use, uh, you know, barred ginger, any, any variety of colors. Don't feel like you're locked into one particular color. You could even use dun. Um, but uh, this, this barred ginger is just sort of dirty and pretty and sits on my desk because I like it. So um, you got options. You can tie them in black. You can tie them in brown. You can tie them in amber. You can tie them in combinations. Um, but this is an important fly that a lot, not a lot of people think about. Um, during the summer months, um, ants get eaten, man. Fish know what they are and uh, eat them with 100% confidence. And I'm all into that kind of thing these days. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. Harrop's Ant, Charlie Craven. Uh, We'll have more. Um, and for those of you that didn't like the black background, I did this one on a blue background for you. Um, and I don't, I don't like it. So I'm just, you know, commenting back to you. I don't really care for the blue background. It's not as cool as the black background. But, you know, we all have our little crosses to bear. And, and today, that's mine. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. Talk to you later.